Um, uh, I'm from Missouri University of Science and Technology. My advisor is Dr. Bato, and uh, Dr. Bato is an assistant professor in Rala, and our research group is focusing on the geotechnical and geoenvironmental engineering, and we welcome you to join to our group and come to visit our laboratories. So today I'm going to present some uh, results, of research results on the characterization of shear wave velocity and uh, the VS and the social bit in granular materials. My presentation outline has five parts. First, I'll give you an introduction. Then I'll show you the pictures of materials and uh, also show you our experimental method. We have developed a new band element testing system. And then I'll give you my test results and then a little bit of discussion, then followed by concluding. So uh, we all know that the small stream thickness of granular materials are very important when we are designing an earthquake resistant of all the wind, tidal effects, and uh, machine vibrations. And uh, for our soil in nature, it's uh, very heterogeneous and it's not isotropic. So the stiffness and isotropy is also very important and it's not well understood, especially under very high conservation pressures. Uh, however, the bender element is a very good tool to measure the shear wave velocity. Of course, this stiffness measurement. Therefore, we, are, we have developed a bender element testing device which is capable of test the VS and the VS and the social pain in different directions. And our device also overcomes like uh, some disadvantages in the later in the old like in the conventional device. We can go very high consolidation pressures. So the materials I'm using is a series of uniformly soil like uh, glass beads and hotel sand. The largest the green I have is the glass piece, 6 mm, and uh, this side is the hotel sand, very fine sand. They all pass in steep number 200 and retain all the steep number 225. If you only see the soil by your eye hole, they're almost like clay, very fine powders, but they're all the silicon sand. And the bottom here is the grain size distribution curve. As you can see, they're all almost parallel relations but they're poorly graded with uniform size. Uh, so now let's look at the manufacture process of the bender element. Top three pictures are how I make the bender elements. First, you cut the bending actuator into small rectangular size and uh, wire it with coaxial cable, shield it with polyurethane sewer paint, and then put those small Fenders in the nylon screw, fix it with the epoxy, and then the, we can install the nylon screw in the top and bottom base. Bottom here is our testing system. Our test system has two major parts. The left side is the signal generation system, and it has the uh, signal generator, a amplifier, a signal filter and oscilloscope. And uh, this side is our consolidation system. We have uh, a floating wall design, which the sail is floating in the water timber. We have three pairs of vendors. Two pairs of installed. Yeah, two, pair, two pairs of vendors are installed in the horizontal direction, and one pair is installed in the vertical direction. And the cell itself is hanged over by this pulley system, and the self weight is balanced by the that weight here. So that's why we call this floating cell or floating wall, which the cell can move up and down during the consolidation. And uh, when we talk about the anisotropy, we're referring to this picture. We have uh, three directions the VH direction, H wave direction, and the HH direction. The first character, way here, shows the wave shear wave proper is vertical. And the second character H means the particles vibrating horizontally. And the H wave direction means the particles 
the shear wave properties horizontally, but the particles in vibrates vertically. And the HH direction, the particles, uh, the shear wave propagates horizontally, and the particles vibrate horizontally. So if the soil is perfectly isotropic, so the Vs in those three directions are should be identical. Uh, but if it's a anisotropic soil, then the Vs in those directions are different. Top two pictures are the how I'm preparing the specimen uh, by com uh, com static compaction, which your target density, and then insert the into the chamber, you can add water or you can change the pH. You can control the test environment using this chamber. And uh, this picture is uh, how to determine the first arrival in band element. We're using sinusoidal wave as the input wave, and the bottom here is a typical receive signal. Like uh, we consider point C as the first arrival time. Normally, there is a small bump before the major arrival, and there's a cross intersection of the small bump to the horizontal time axis. The point C we consider it as the first arrival time, and we're consistently using this point to find out the first arrival time. And uh, here's a series of received signal under different consolidation stress from around 48 kPa to 800 kPa. As you can see, as the consolidation stress increased, the first arrival time decreasing. And when we unload the soil, the first arrival time increasing. And uh, the upper side and lower side between the 800 are almost asymmetry, which means the glass piece uh, it's almost deforming elastically. And this is a test results from H-wave direction, but similar results are found for the other two directions. Those two pictures are the glass beads, 6 millimeter sample during loading and the unloading stage. Left side is the loading stage. And uh, we can see slightly VS difference as we load the soil but the difference is not too much. And uh, the Vs increasing with the vertical stress increase is almost like a linear trend. And if we unload the soil, we, we can see a difference. HH direction and H wave direction are, has the, have the higher Vs compared with the VH direction. But in the loading stage, the VH has the highest Vs and HVA and HHA has the lower VS. So this might be the reason that during the unloading stage, horizontal stress are locked, the force chain are locked horizontally. So when we remove the vertical stress, the major principal stress rotate, and the, the, the higher of the horizontal stress causes the anisotropic soil and the cause the VS in, in horizontal direction are higher than the vertical direction. This is the test results for the Otawa sand, the fine sand I showed you in the previous picture. As distinctly from the glass beads, as you could see, our sample are initially has an initial fabric and a social beam. VH has the highest direction, uh, highest VS, and uh, HH has the lowest VS. And the curve is on like a non-linear. As we load soil and unload the soil, the VH always have the highest VS, and the uh, HH and HV has the is slightly smaller than the VH direction. And we didn't find any like stress lock during the unloading condition. And now I talk about the stress dependency of the VS. Uh, we're using the top equation to feed uh, Vs versus the mean stress effect. Alpha, beta, the 18 parameters. And uh, the mean stress is calculated by the second equation here. And uh, alpha, beta models have been published in the literature, for example, 
from Santa Marina 2001 and uh, Ku 2011. Our fitted data are those dots where it's, and the models are plotted in the solid line and the dotted line. Where our data is agreed well with the uh, literature models. And another interesting thing is the larger grains are plotted bottom here and small grids are a little bit upper, which means uh, larger grids has a small beta, they are more elastic, and small grids are more plastic. So here is my uh, conclusion. We have designed a bundle element testing device, which is capable of measuring the BS and the BS and the social of soil. And uh, we started the influencing factors on the VS and the anisotropic, for example, the non-pose gradation, the consolidation stress, particle shape, and we found the larger particles are more plastic, elastic, and there's no uh, significant inherent fabric anisotropic, but for small grids, there are more, uh, has more anis uh, fabric anisotropic. And our testing device also is capable of uh, testing the anisotropic VS of clay samples. I have test results show you this is the VS and also the KOE night mixed with 0.005 molar per liter salt solution. As we load the soil, the VS uh, and also the initiation initiated the here and maximize at higher stress. And we run on the sample, the, the and also the are constant. And also, here is some organic uh, PEO polymers modified soil. Similar trend, but the anisotropy are largely different from the previous one. And this one is the flash kiln on mixtures. As we change the gradation, put some larger grains in the soil, the anisotropy kind of decreased. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.